All right, so just scrying the Enochian word Jehusaz, which means God's mercies. So I've scribed that I've repeated the call three times just to ensure that it comes through clearly. And the first thing I'm seeing is the cross. And the tops and bottoms are extending out towards me, creating this three-dimensional sphere with crosses upon it, six crosses and all. And it's like it itself is spinning in this big circle. And in so doing, it's sort of kicking up dirt, as it were. So sort of, if you could imagine a sphere doing this and creating its own circle. And from this, it's like this circle is like flipping around and creating another sphere. And that this is sort of like in a small way, God, in, a, in the previous scrying that I just did, I saw the image of a bird casting a shadow on the ground in flight, just with the wings extended. And I saw that image of the cross in that, you know, and it was interesting and telling to me. So, we can see here that even like a small act that can have like this wiser effect on somebody that can pull them out of this status quo. If we think of like the ground, literally this thing that we're working with, you know, when, when one speaks of the ground of whatever, we speak of that in a little bit of a metaphorical way, speaking about the situation that one is in. And so, we're seeing, so this process repeats and there are more and more spheres spinning about, creating a larger sphere from that circle that it creates in whatever ground it's in. And so basically this is God's way from this simple act of basically, I mean, if, if you think about it geometrically, right, like a sphere create, you know, going about in a circle is is basically a line in a curved manner. <laughs> That's what all circles are. I mean, you take like a spaghetti noodle, stretch it out, it's a line, but then you can turn it around and have it create that. And by extension, one can create, it's basically God creating himself in whatever situation it is. So the other thing I've always noticed with the heart is that that same idea of a sphere, I mean, the, the heart is roughly spherical, not in, entirely so, of course, but energetically, we can think of it as a chakra. Chakra literally means wheel, right? So the wheel is a 2D representation of like literally like a 3D space. And we've seen this in Merkaba literature and this idea of eyes. Um, an eye itself is, is you know, when, when you're doing like going up to the thrones, or the, the palaces, a lot of times you'll see the eyes, so the, the, the spheres rolling around or being the means by which a throne can roll around. So, but the main thing is I wanna get back to this idea of the heart. And we see in this is for a lot of us, the heart is occluded. We can't see what's going on, but if we can sort of get a larger a larger ground or a larger dimensional space or what have you, a larger context for which whatever we have done or we have failed to be, we can find some small way to change within ourselves, then maybe not immediately, maybe we need this from other directions, but we can get a larger playground for our smaller failings to evolve from. So, for example, you're upset about something, you're, you're crying, you're asking for God for mercy because you haven't done this, that, or the other thing, and you haven't measured up. So what God can literally do is he can find ways for both your heart to be at peace, but not just like in a comforting way, but also 
a means to develop and feel like that suffering, even though it was painful, it led to this growth in the sense that this situation isn't okay. What else can I bring in to make the situation better, manageable, workable, sustainable in the long run? And maybe that's not just one thing, but that's a whole series and sequences of things. And then that can tie into the entire world and the entire context that we find ourselves in. So it's very beautiful. But at the end of the day, you know, just coming back to this, you know, idea from the Timaeus, you know, this whole idea of a sphere from which to start, that's really the sense that I'm get, being given in this, in this vision right now is a sphere finding another ground to work upon and all starting from this central idea of, of mercy and God in this world, you know, the cross is basically four right angles, right? And if you were to split it apart and then rotate them in, you get a means by which the earth in terms represented by a square or a cube can be rectified because that same cross can also be a sphere. So this whole idea of squaring the circle and cubing the sphere, you know, there's this reconciliation between heaven and earth. And it's very direct and it's very beautiful. And the real trick is to remember that, you know, use that same idea of like a cross is very like straight right angles, but it could also be extended out. And it's, um, and this is happening constantly. The sense that I'm getting is, I mean, you've heard that phrase wheels between wheels within wheels. That's really the sense that I'm getting right now of the, of the thing that is happening with consciousness at a lot of levels. And so the people who, to whom much has been given in terms of talents, gifts, and, and, and hearts, literally some people, their biggest talent and gift is their heart. Um, they are making they're affecting a lot more wheels than the rest of us. And I'm trying to see what else. And I'm seeing also a bit of a, an inverse side to this, where that same motion that the sphere is making on the ground, it's also a torus, T-O-R-U-S. And as it continues to move from one place to another, it's really creating these tunnels. And these tunnels that are left in space-time are really, or, or perhaps it's better to say, these tunnels that are left in reality allow the heart to navigate and to find new places to go that maybe it would not have been able to find on its own. So there are these interesting little pop-up dimensions almost, because God works in all of the available dimensions, because he's in all of them, he is all of them. But this working allows for wider, broader navigations uh, for the heart to travel and to, to grow, evolve, and to meet others. And so this seems to have a pretty, this seems pretty profound, right? Because not only is, is there this means for the heart to evolve, but there's also a means for the heart to travel. And both of these things are pretty vast mercies. And I'm being told that there's more, but I am not to know that yet. <laughs> so that's okay, you know? Um, that's the way it goes. So I'm asking, and I'm seeing a little bit of a square pyramid, half of an octahedron, and I'm being told there will be more to this. So, um, but the, just really quick, the commentary on that is that if you were to take a cube, the, the double of that in platonic geometry is, or in mathematics as well, Basically, a, a cube has six surfaces and 12 vertices, or eight vertices, excuse me. And for an octahedron, it's the opposite. Eight surfaces, but only six 
uh, vertices or points. And that there's, that's something of, uh, for you to meditate on and to see that, um, and to really try to bring out a little bit of what that might mean in terms of, of reconciling, reconciliation and bringing in the Trinity um, to this uh, Platon, to this um, idea. So uh, that octahedron, by the way, is associated with air and air can go anywhere. You know, if you're thinking about it in terms of being able to reconcile um, reconcile of all of the different elements. So I'm asking if there's anything else and I'm being told no, but to really consider and, and, and take some time with that uh, octahedron and what it, what it means and what its potential is. So there it is. So this is a pretty wide ranging vision, uh, but it ends.